First up, well, more than 60,000 people have lost their lives around the globe due to coronavirus pandemic, and the U.S. continues to be the worst affected country. More than 7,000 people have lost their lives, and 275,000 people have tested positive for the virus in the United States. On Friday, the U.S. reported more than 30,000 confirmed coronavirus cases in one day for the first time. Scientists in the U.S. worry that the worst is yet to come. The researchers estimate that around 195,000 people in the U.S. could die by the end of the year. Other studies show that more worrisome projections of lives of 2.5 million people in the U.S. could be at risk if efforts are not made to control the outbreak. Now the question arises, how did the world's richest country end up being the worst affected in the world? And will the country reach a point of no return? The answer to these questions lies in the way the U.S. President Donald Trump has dealt with the situation. In January, when coronavirus entered the United States, Trump said in an interview, we have it totally under control. It's going to be just fine. In February, he said, and I quote, pretty much shut it down coming in from China. Late February, he made a statement saying, we are going to substantially uh, down, not up. He referred to the number of cases in the U.S., which in fact were increasing at this point. Now, in March, Trump admitted that coronavirus is contagious, but maintained that it's something his administration has tremendous control of. In a recent press conference, Trump was asked about downplaying the threat. He said that if we look at the statements individually, they are all true. He also said that he does not want panic in the country. Trump has always looked at the pandemic from an economic point of view. He feared that the virus could lead to a major economic fallout, which in turn could have an uh, impact on his political career in an election year. He recently warned of, quote, unquote, very painful two weeks for the United States. But he has time and again said that he is eager to reopen the U.S. economy in, the week, in weeks and not months. Now, the U.S. has found itself in the middle of the pandemic without a leadership to count on. The richest country in the world is ill-equipped to cope with the crisis. The lack of leadership and it has put more American lives at stake. The U.S. Vice President Mike Pence, who has been appointed to head the coronavirus task force, blamed the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and China on the country's late response to the pandemic. As the number of coronavirus cases continue to rise in the U.S., Trump's take on a national or a regional lockdown has also been inconsistent. On March 24th, Trump seemed eager to avoid economic and social fallouts and stated the country should be open for business by April 12th. He extended the deadline till the end of April after public health experts warned that lifting restrictions too soon could cause far more deaths. As of now, three out of four Americans are under some form of lockdown. Almost two-thirds of the states have issued directives for citizens to stay put. Barely more than a handful of public health departments in the U.S. are able to test coronavirus. The federal government has less than 10% of the protective masks required for healthcare workers. Washington does not have adequate funding to support health department's efforts. In a press conference with the state governors, Trump suggested that there was no longer a lack of kits for testing. He said that the U.S. has tested more than any nation in the world and that he has not heard about testing being a problem. But Montana governor said that the state does not have adequate number of kits among all the other governors who have been complaining of not having enough equipment. Meanwhile, state authorities have also shown complacency in the face of the pandemic, the New York governor, Andrew Cuomo, uh, directed all the parks in New York to be closed to limit the spread of COVID-19. The decision came days after New York became a hot spot. Cuomo warned that the state was in great need of ventilators. New York is the worst affected state in the U.S., remember. The governor said that the state has only enough ventilators in the stockpile for just six days. To this, Trump said that the state should have ordered more ventilators years ago, isn't it?
Uh, Governor Cuomo is saying that New York may be days away from running out of ventilators. Can you assure New York that going into next week that they're going to have the ventilators that they're going to need? No, they should have had more ventilators at the time. They should have had more ventilators. They were totally uh, underserviced. Uh, we are trying to do, we're doing our best for New York. You know, we have, uh, we have states. We have a lot of states. We have territories, too. But we have a lot of states that have to be taken care of, some much more so than others. We've uh, worked very well with the governor. Uh, we happen to think that uh, he's well served with ventilators. We're going to find out. But we have other states to take care of. Well, the Trump administration is encouraging many Americans to wear face masks in public, though uh, Trump says himself that it's only a recommendation and it's optional. He said that according to the latest guidelines, Americans can use makeshift masks uh, like T-shirts, bandanas to cover their noses and mouths. But Trump said that he would not wear one himself. D.C. is advising the use of non-medical cloth face covering as an additional voluntary public health measure. So it's voluntary. You don't have to do it. They suggest it for a period of time. But uh, this is voluntary. I don't think I'm going to be doing it.